My country is the world. My religion is to do good. Welcome to the Berkeley Fellowship of Unitarian Universalists. I'm Virginia Hollins Davidson, the president of the Board of Trustees here. And tonight, we are glad to see you here and um, for this momentous occasion, celebrating the 277th birthday of Tom Paine. I also want to appreciate all of those who are being honored tonight. We are just grateful to have you with us. Tom Paine, born January 29th, 1737, died June 8, 1809, was an Englishman by birth, an American by adoption, and a Frenchman by decree. Tom Payne was born January 29, 1737, near the Norfolk County line. He grew up in old England in a house of poverty, but he learned to read and write because the school of there was free. Oh, Tom Payne, if you could see it now. Oh, oh Tom Payne would struggle on. In his 72 years, he did more than any person to inspire uh, the revolutionary spirit with his eloquent words. And yet he was, as Ben said, wisely, uh, widely disliked, uh, even by some of his fellow revolutionaries. What an honor, what a guy. Uh, free thinker, revolutionary, radical. Tom Paine, who is the founding father who is almost ignored in the universities. I know that because I took a course in political theory. I don't think he was mentioned, or if he was, he was to talk about as the person who popularized the ideas of the real thinkers like Adams and Jefferson. Goes, there are times that try men's souls, the summer soldier and the sunshine and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of it now. Helping hand, got a letter of recommendation as an ingenious worthy man. Oh, Tom Payne, if you could see this problem. Oh, Tom Payne, we'll struggle on the He sailed to Philadelphia in 1774, and a letter that he Carried there, opened up the door. What I have is for Bonnie Faulkner, well known producer and host of Guns and Butter radio show on uh, Pacifica, the stalwart trooper for truth. So let's give her a big hand. Well, thank you very much. Um, when I got uh, the email from Vic that I, had, uh, I was going to be given a Tom Payne award, I thought, well, I better find out something about Tom Payne. <laughs> I care not how affluent some may become, provided that none are made miserable in consequence of it. That there are men in all countries who get their living by war and by keeping up the quarrels of nations is as shocking as it is true. But when those who are concerned in the government of a country make it their study to sow discord and cultivate prejudices between nations, it becomes the more unpardonable. Thanks for remembering me, and uh, maybe I'll have to come out there after I, I graduate in August. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 And then I'll, I'll uh, have my PhD and you know, I'll be up there with Dr. Condoleezza Rice and <laughs> Dr. Susan Rice. What they are are individuals who have positions of authority, but they are not our leaders. But we have to delve into what they say and behind the words that they use.
to get to the facts of what our government is doing in our name and the um, innovator of this methodology is Dr. Peter Dale Scott. <laughs> Peter Dale Scott is a former Canadian diplomat and professor of English at the University of California, Berkeley. He's a well-noted poet, writer, researcher, and anti-war activist for many years. His latest political book is American War Machine, published in 2010. Uh, he also has a book called uh, The Road to 9-11, which is uh, very popular uh, in our circles. Um, as an anti-war speaker during the Vietnam and Gulf Wars, he was a co-founder of the Peace and Conflict Studies Program at UC Berkeley. <laughs> and of the Coalition on Political Assassinations, COPA. He's a poet and in 2002 won the Lannan Poetry Award. Let's give a big hand to Peter Dale Scott. We were very honored to have him here. We were very honored to give him the Tom Payne Courageous Spirit Award. Called the Founding Brothers, and it may it reconciled me to some of the Founding Fathers I really didn't care for once upon a time, like Alexander Hamilton, particularly. Um, <clears throat> America needed them all to be launched as a republic. There had been many republics before, but not many of them lasted very long. And it was the unique mix of all these people, and I think the special dimension that Tom Paine gave that the others didn't was to reach right into the hearts of the people, give them something to read. Common sense, it was almost looked down on in the university because it was common sense. Well, why teach it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Man did not enter society to be worse off or to have fewer rights, but rather to have those rights better secured. His natural rights are the foundation of all his civil rights. Thomas Paine and the Rights of Man. Diana Bone has been to Honduras many times. She's been to Nicaragua, Central America. She really exemplifies that spirit of living for the community. She's always working in the background, too. So, Diana, would you come up here so I can present you with common sense? So, please. Say something about yourself. <laughs> well, I, I just felt like this is rather humbling to come after Cynthia McKinney and uh, Peter Dale Scott. This is also for the rights of man about capital punishment. Teach governments humanity. It is their sanguinary punishments which corrupt mankind. Give to every other human being every right you, that you claim for yourself. That is my doctrine. It is error only and not truth that shrinks from inquiry. Good evening. I'm Cynthia Paper Master. In uh, 2013, I got the first Thomas Paine. Uh, Courageous Spirit Award, along with Maxine Vitter, who's sitting in the audience right there, who will be giving us a song shortly. Mm -hmm. And I was so honored by that, so I'm participating in tonight's event, too. And I have the honor of presenting an award to Chelsea Manning, first of all, in absentia. And Chelsea Manning, as we know, formerly Bradley Manning, is in prison, given a sentence of 35 years. Um, of course, uh, Chelsea Manning is a true American patriot and hero uh, who we owe a huge debt of gratitude to. So we will be sending her a certificate and a book by Tom Payne to the prison. Um, oh, I, okay, Scott, you might as well come up here. <laughs> and next I have the honor, I'm gonna give this to Scott Olson here to uh, to give to Chelsea Mann, and the next day I have the honor of presenting an award to Scott Olson. Yeah. Here's and, um, it says, um, awarded on this day in Historic Fellowship Hall, Thursday, January 30, 2014, for your steadfast work against war, 
for use, your use of nonviolent direct action, for your courageous spirit and actions, truly in the living tradition and the shining spirit of Tom Payne, Scott Olson. It's, uh, it's truly an honor to receive an award in the name of Tom, Thomas Paine and to um, see my na name listed alongside Chelsea Maddox. Um, she is a true hero and, and I could see myself in her place. I, I had access to the, the same documents, I just never really had, had the time to really access those, those documents, but if, if I had seen the same things she did, you know, I, I, I could very well be, be locked up like she is right now. So, so I really identify with her, and, and I'm happy to um, get this word to her, and, and I'm happy to receive this word for myself as well. She was one of the first writers who recognized me, and he, he, he thought ahead of his time. Time, and those thoughts included anti-slavery, anti-religious authority, um, inclusiveness in voting, and and I think I think it's time again to push ourselves to and and beyond those boundaries to which he has pushed push himself in the past, and and like it's it's time to just devise strategies to to form new strategies for um for a way forward beyond his radical think in the past. And um, thank you very much. It is over the lowest class of mankind that government by terror is intended to operate. And it is on them that it operates to the worst effect. They inflict in their turn the examples of terror they have been instructed to practice. This is to our courageous friend, Vic Sado, who day by day keeps working as well. He moved here from Delaware, he'd gone to the University of Delaware. Um, and I would like to say a word about Vic too. He, um, he calls himself the broadside balladeer in the tradition of Phil Oakes, who's a wonderful, uh, uh, a folk singer who we love for his wonderful uh, songs, inspiring songs, um, now long gone, but uh, Vic carries on that tradition and writes songs that tell the truth really strongly, and I, I know I really enjoy them, and I also appreciate so much Vic's willingness to come out to actions and sing, and um, it really adds a lot of community spirit to the actions. So Vic, please come forward and accept this Oh, courageous Tom Payne. Oh, 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 got it before to keep it going and to participate each year. We're going to try and make that happen. So I expect to be here to, to be one of those, and I really appreciate that. Cynthia and Maxina are here uh, helping to continue make this happen. I want to say, though, just that I didn't know much about Tom Paine. I went and got my degree in political science at the University of Delaware. They didn't talk about Tom Paine. Peter was talking about how he kind of got left out of academia. And uh, when I graduated, it was in 69, I went to Washington, D.C. and got a job in the school system there. And it was actually a draft, draft exempt job for a little while. And there was a community bookstore there, and I went and I got all these books, learned about labor history. And I thought, well, geez, why didn't they teach me labor history? You know, class conscious history. You might be able to understand what's going on in your society with that. A nation under a well-regulated government should permit none to remain uninstructed. It is monarchical and aristocratical government only that requires ignorance for its support.
My experience has been that, you know, the people who have the most often don't seem very happy at all in life. And, um, and the people who have often not so much in the material realm, the focus becomes what it always has been for us as humans as we evolved over millions of years into what we are now, where our potential lies, and that is that people, people and community are the focus very clearly for many who don't have that much in the material world. And in 1649, to St. George's Hill, a ragged band they call the diggers came to show the people's will, they defy the landlords, they defy the laws. They were the dispossessed reclaiming what was theirs. We come in peace, they said, to dig and sow. We come to work the lands in common and to make the wastelands grow this suit divided. We'll make home so it can be a common treasury for all. The sin of property we do to stay. No one has any right to buy or sell the earth for private gain. By theft and murder, they stole the land. Now everywhere the walls rise up at their command. We eat together, we need no swords. We will not bow to the masters, your pay rent to the lords. We are free people, but we are poor. You diggers all stand up for glory, stand up now. From the men of property, the orders came. They sent their hired men and Troopers to wipe out the diggers claim, tear down their cottages, destroy the airport. They were dispersed, but still their vision lingers on. You poor take courage, you rich take care. This earth was made a common treasury for everyone to share all things in common. All people we come in peace, the orders came to cut them down. We come in peace, the orders came to cut them down. But such is the irresistible nature of truth that all it asks and all at once is the liberty of appearing. Thomas Plain. My country is the world. My religion is to do good. Mm -hmm.